some of the assessment of existing substances, the, we, the risk assessment, the management are regulated, again, under SEPA 1999. It is a cooperative uh, program. So Environment Canada or Environment and Climate Change Canada uh, and Health Canada actually meet and talk about these substances regularly and they manage them together. Categorization and prior, uh, prioritization assessments uh, for grandfather DS, uh, DSL substances. They can use restrictions, they can write regulations, and they can do enforcement on these substances for companies that are importing or manufacturing or using. But the Government of Canada indicates that it's still focused on risk-based approaches uh, with SEPA. Uh, it's fundamentally sound. They will speak to it. Um, the SEPA review multi-stakeholder meetings uh, are, are, have been clearly uh, stated uh, in industry bilateral meetings. Now, some of the SEPA review priority areas to reform substances coming in from avenues other than categorization and new areas of priorities leverage experience gain. So so, you know, uh, all the vulnerable uh, population. Uh, references are made to incorporating powers to move, remove substances from the DSL. So when we were talking about the DSL, I told you right now the government cannot delete the substance from the DSL. One of the things they're trying to fix is to be able to have the authority to remove at least substances that are eye concern uh, into the environment. So take it off the DSL and ask for more information. At this point, all they can do is risk manage the substance, but it still remains on the DSL. Uh, reference, uh, focus on consumer exposure. There's a, a big push right now in Canada to just look at consumer, uh, consumer goods and consumer exposure. Post-2020, Health Canada, Environment and Climate Change Canada have begun early thinking. And one of the things they've been doing is uh, holding more stakeholder uh, consultation. So uh, there was one in 2016, there's one in 2017, there's one coming up at the end of this month. Uh, and, uh, and so what the government's trying to do is uh, talk to industry, NGOs, academic media, just uh, to give them the ideas of where they're trying to go with uh, post-2020 and ask for, uh, ask for suggestions or ideas or at least feedback on, the, on what they're proposing. And by the way, the government of Canada will listen. Um, they may not act on everything, but they will listen. Um, being discussed internationally, Canada, Canada is uh, co-chairing the first meeting of intersessional uh, process uh, considering strategic approach on uh, sound management of all chemicals and waste beyond 2020. So it's not just, uh, it's not just Canada, it's, you know, international. The new substances program is for substances that are not on DSL, duh, or substances on the DSL uh, that represent uh, low concern reduce regulatory requirement polymers, uh, or substances affected by snacks, significant new activities. Snacks and SNRs are different. SNRs are, is a risk management uh, approach, whereas a snack is an informational approach. So that means we've looked at, they've looked at the substance, they said we have no problem with the substance, you can import the substance, but if you're going to use it in any other activities, we'd like to get more information. A snur is more of a risk management. So the new substances program uh, or the new substances regulations, uh, and it's called the new substances notification regulations, chemicals and polymers, and it addresses chemicals, polymers, biochemicals, biopolymers. Um, it has prescribed information, uh, and it also it gives you um, the periods for assessment. So there's two new substances notification regulations. I'm not gonna talk about organisms, but it's organisms other than microorganisms and microorganisms. The onus is on the industry to submit the data. The onus is on government to assess it in the time prescribed in the regulations. Yes, there are time prescribed. And if the government, especially in the, in the final, uh, uh, final schedules, if they do not give you uh, the risk assessment, then uh, you can import the, uh, the substance without any restrictions. So they have uh, an obligation. Now, I'll be honest with you, from the time I was there, 100% of the, of the notification that were uh, received uh, either went through a complete risk assessment or at least add uh, what they do, a preliminary assessment to see that there was no issues. 
under the new task, our uh, registration is uh, required before any activities in Canada. The, re the registration and notification is uh, is after a certain amount, like for chemicals, 100 kilograms of polymers, a thousand. Key aspects of the regulations, NSNR, uh, groups of substances, trigger quantities, length of assessment, that's what you'll find in the regulation. A scope is for chemicals, polymers, biochemicals, and biopolymers, and it uses a tiered approach so that you don't have to do one notification with all this data, because there's a lot of data required. Uh, at the end of the day, either you've got like a non-NDSL chemicals, you have to do a schedule four, five, and six. That would be a lot of data and very expensive to Canadian, the Canadian system. Uh, uses an approach, so schedule four is less information, five more information, and six more information even. Just some of the changes of interest in Canada. Um, and there are really three main things, so enzymes. For, for years now, the Government of Canada has asked for the EC number uh, given by the IUMEMB um, for all enzymes, and now they're changing that back to they just want CAS registry number because they believe it identifies a substance uniquely, whereas uh, the EC number is more broad about class of substances. So they're changing that. It's going to be in the next revision of the, of the guidelines for notification and testing, which they have absolutely released uh, to the to industry for review and for comments, um, so we've just or just going through it, and then the manufactured item is also so for years and years and years you've heard me say <laughs> if you have a manufactured item and if the substance is going to be released from the manufactured item, uh, it's non-dispersive and it's controlled, you're good. The government's changing that. If the substance is going to be released from the manufactured item, toner cartridges. Pens, uh, and it's intended to be released, donor cartridges, pens, uh, and if one of the substances in that mixture is not on the DSL, therefore you're going to have to submit a notification. So that changes a lot of things. Uh, and then, of course, the new substances notification form has just been released uh, for comments as well. So we're going through it. Um, a lot of us are just looking at that and seeing. They're asking a lot more information on nanomaterials uh, and mixtures and blends and so on.